Well, the original Liberty Bell, the one this is painted up after, uh, flew 64 missions with the 390th Bomb Group based in Framlingham. And on its 64th mission, it was pretty severely shot up. A couple crew members had been killed. And it was the only airplane out of the fleet uh, from the 390th that made it home. And they scrapped it on site to continue to keep the rest of the fleet going. We are uh, on a 50 city national tour with the B-17, honoring our veterans, continuing to preserve our aviation history, and uh, educate current and future generations as to the high price of freedom. The B-17 has a 107-foot wingspan. It's uh, almost 70 feet long, uh, four 1,200 horsepower engines. The aircraft itself weighs approximately 34,000 pounds empty, fully loaded, maxed out. It probably weighs anywhere from 52 to 54,000 pounds. It has 1,700 gallons of fuel on board. It carries approximately 7,000 pounds of bombs on board. And when you go up on the aircraft today, you will see uh, replica 500 pound bombs. And it also externally racked uh, munitions as well. The B-17 had a crew of uh, between 9 and 10. You had a pilot and a co-pilot in the cockpit. You also had a top turret gunner right behind them in the cockpit. You had a navigator and a bombardier up in the glass nose, a radio operator midship just after the wing, and two waste gunners on the side windows, and a tail gunner as well. Uh, we have uh, non-passengers normally get on board. They're allowed to go throughout the airplane during flight except for the, where the two pilots are sitting. The uh, flight engineer on board assists the passengers going throughout the uh, aircraft during flight to get the, go to the all positions on the aircraft, including the bombardier's position, navigator's position, and the gunner's position. First of all, I can tell you the creature comforts part isn't the order of the day. Um, you know, there's no air conditioning. Uh, all the control cables are running on the top of the airplane. What they'll truly get is a feel for what it was like. They, once we're airborne, they're only in their seat for takeoff and landing. They can get up and go to the cockpit, the glass nose, all the different crew positions, and truly get a feel for what their airplane was like. Grab a machine gun, um, you know, imagine ME-109s coming in at them and, and truly get a feel for it. We're up for approximately 28 minute flight. It's quite enjoyable. The, the most beautiful view is in the nose area where the bombardier navigator sat because you got the whole world in front of you. And to coin a phrase, you're gonna get there first. Everybody else gets there after you. We have so many veterans come out that take one more flight in the airplane. A lot of family members wanna come out and get a better idea of what dad and grandpa did. Uh, the airplane truly has an impact on people that you never really realize until you come out and, and witness it firsthand. You know, it's, it's absolute hands-on history. You know, you try to put yourself in the proper perspective of an 18, 19-year-old kid volunteering to go off to war uh, to defend our country and certainly the, the, the beliefs that they held dear, knowing that you might not come home. And it's, it's hard for you to put yourself in that perspective. It's, uh, it's amazing to see these veterans get on the airplane here 62, 65 years later, and they're 18, 19-year-old all over again. It's amazing. It's in my heart for the airmen gone past, and we're out here to keep it flying, keep that history going in remembrance of those guys and women who were lost in combat in World War II. Overall, it's just to honor our veterans. You know, we're losing uh, 1,500 World War II veterans a day, and uh, you know, with every death goes a story of, of courage and valor, and I hope this airplane properly represents those stories of courage and valor.